and I call on Nicola Sturgeon, First Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am going to be uh, brief, firstly because I know everybody wants to go and have lunch, uh, but secondly I am not sure uh, that I can uh, go much further without uh, crying. Uh, so just to say from me uh, to colleagues across this chamber, thank you uh, for your generous comments. Uh, they mean a great deal to me um, and I deeply appreciate them. Uh, to Emma, uh, Emma, I remember that exchange uh, really well, and I cannot tell you how proud I am of you uh, that you now sit in this parliament making such a positive contribution, and who knows, may one day stand here at this place in our parliament. Thank you uh, for that contribution. Um, Emma's is one of probably thousands of interactions I've had with girls and young women across these eight years of my time as First Minister. And if I have encouraged even just a few of them to believe more in themselves and to stand a bit taller, then I will be very happy uh, because that means a great deal to me. Uh, more generally, Presiding Officer, uh, to lead this country is the pinnacle of what this uh, shy, uh, introverted, uh, that's still the case, not just when I was a, a young girl, but what this shy, introverted, working class girl from Ayrshire could ever have dreamed uh, of. And this country is truly amazing. And the people who live in this country, uh, no matter where they came from, are also amazing. As I've traveled uh, overseas as First Minister, and that has been an enormous privilege, I have had the opportunity uh, to see uh, just how much Scotland punches above her weight. And I have seen directly the respect that we are held in by people right across the globe. Perhaps all we need to do now here at home is believe a bit more in ourselves. Now, even although I know uh, without a shadow of a doubt that the time is right for me to go, uh, I do feel emotional today. And perhaps the reason for that is that I know beyond doubt that even if I live to be 100 years old, there is no phase in my life that will be as special or as meaningful to me as these last eight years have been. Uh, you will, of course, see me very soon on a backbench near here. But in the meantime, presiding officer, for the final time from me as First Minister to the people of Scotland, uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the privilege of being your First Minister. How are you feeling? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty emotional. I you know, possibly struggled a bit more than uh, I hoped I would to, to, to not uh, shed a few tears in there. I think particularly uh, what I'm feeling right now, and I felt this when I was thanking people who, without them, I would not have lasted any time as, as First Minister. You know, ultimately, the job that I do is the highest office in the land, but it's still fundamentally about people, and the hardest part of this decision is the people I'm going to miss not First seeing every single day. Sorry. First Minister, it um, certainly some emotion. No tears, quite, but do you leave with any regrets? Oh, look, you know, show me a human being or a politician or a, a government minister uh, that does
was in the country, mates, and I showed you somebody that's not properly human. What's your them. biggest? Uh, look, I'm not going to do that today. No They're, independence? Uh, no. I would love to have been the leader who took Scotland's independence, but I think I've said this to many of you as well. For me, I campaigned for independence literally since I was 16 years old. For me, claiming independence is much, 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 much more important than the person who leads us there, and I have no doubt Scotland will become independent. So, you know, I'll have time uh, to reflect at leisure on my time in office. I'm sure many of you will continue to reflect on that time. I'm proud. I won't go through them. I've, I've said in there some of the things I'm proud of. Uh, this has been a privilege. It's been a privilege every single day. You know, I have led Scotland through a period in our history that nobody would have chosen. Uh, COVID shaped the country, I, I think, in ways that we probably don't yet fully understand. It shaped has undoubtedly changed me as a person and I think when we look back it will be seen to have defined my my time as first minister. So you know and that created that really difficult time for everybody and I've said before my job is not the toughest in the country by any stretch of the imagination. But I felt during that period a bond with the Scottish people uh, that sustained me and I hope it helped the country through. Do you have regrets about how the party's been left? Uh, no, I have great confidence in the future of my party. Um, I think I alluded to this in there, but I didn't tell the full story. Forgive me if some of you have heard this story before. I, I went to my first ever SNP meeting in the volunteer room as an urban in the Cunningham South constituency in 1986. And I always remember that meeting because it was my first. But there was, everybody knew it was on that time because. The Zenith here from the Herald, System 3 opinion poll, come out that day and we were at 12%. And the reason everybody was on a high, it was the first time in ages we've been in government. My party has come such a long way, and it's come such a long way through hard work, serving Scotland, and being a team, solidarity, and, and unity. And, you know, even in the last few days when there's been hyperbolic phrases used about collapse and all sorts of things, still keep most opinion polls, and they still show the SNP way ahead of anyone else. Now, my successor should not take that for granted. I have never taken that for granted. But I have real confidence in whoever my successor is to continue to build on the success of the party and the government. But to do that, they must remain focused on the interests and the priorities of people across the country. Okay, thank you all. Thank you all very much.